During their time, Vikings made countless trips to explore the world. They met and communicated with many ethnic groups to exchange and trade goods. Most people they met had a bad impression of them and were even scared when they heard the name Viking. But there were also special cases that caused the Vikings to be wary and run away, unable to plunder or stay long in that place. One of them is the Native American people. There are stories passed around about encounters on both sides and the Vikings suffering huge losses and fleeing. So who are these Native Americans and what ethnic group do they belong to that can resist such ferocious pirates? Let's find out in today's video. In the year 980, Eric the Red set out to explore Greenland and it wasn't exactly a voluntary decision. Eric, known for his wild nature, was banished from Iceland for three years after committing murder. He had to leave his hometown of Iceland with his family to move to a new land, which cleverly named the cold, inhospitable land he found while exploring Greenland to entice people to move there, and it worked. A few hundred Vikings eventually settled and called Greenland home. Eric's son, Leif Eriksson, became fascinated with the story after learning about the exotic lands of the West from a merchant sailor lost on his way from Iceland to Greenland. So around 1000 AD, Leif and 35 men set sail in search of a mysterious land. And they found it. They set up camp in what is now known as Newfoundland. And Leif's adoptive father, Tiger, discovered many fruits, including grapes, while slightly drunk. Some say he may have eaten fermented cranberries, currants, or pumpkins, all of which grew wild in the area. Their visit was short-lived, and they eventually returned to Greenland without encountering any Native Americans. A few years later, Leif's brother, Thorvald, made a second trip and camped where Leif had been. They had a tense encounter with the Native Americans, leading to a battle in which Thorvald lost his life. Despite this, the Vikings ended up staying one more winter before returning to Greenland. The story is told that Thorvald's party encountered Native Americans just as they pulled their boat ashore. The two sides rushed at each other with weapons in hand. The battle-hardened Vikings killed eight Native Americans, but unfortunately, the price to pay was that Thorvald also lost his life afterwards. They say that the Native Americans shot an arrow through the side of the ship and the shield hit Thorvald's armpit, a wound so fatal that he later died. Because of their bad impression of the Native Americans, the Vikings gave them the name Skraling. The word is most likely related to the Old Norse word, you, meaning dry skin. In surviving sources, it was first applied to the Thula people, the original Inuit group, the people Thorvald's group encountered may also have been Inuit. Norman carvings have been found at Thule archaeological sites, along with iron and bronze tools that the Thule could not have made themselves. It is believed that the Viking name Skraling for Native Americans may be derived from the Old Norse word scarf, referring to the animal skins worn by Inuit ancestors. The Inuit are an indigenous people living in the northernmost reaches of Canada. There are approximately 51 Inuit communities living in Inuit Nunangat. Inuit means people in the Inuktitut language. The Inuit people are called Inuk. Nunangat is the land where they live. Inuit Nunungadis, a Canadian word, Inuit meaning land, water, and ice in the Arctic region. Much of the area they inhabit is water, land, and ice, which the Inuit consider vital to their way of life and culture. The Inuit lands are huge, they make up 35% of Canada's total land area. This means that their territory is over a million square miles. It also covers half of Canada's coastline, the Inuit hunted caribou, whales, and seals. They hunt on land and at sea. They use spears, bows, and arrows, clubs, and stone traps. Knives are used to cut meat and even snow. Ulu is the name of a special type of knife used by the Inuit people. The Inuit would not waste any animals. They would eat their meat and use their fur and skins to make special clothing to keep them warm in the cold conditions of the Arctic. The Inuit are also very skillful fishermen, hunting and fishing under the ice for their daily food. Inuksuk, Inuksuk, 
resembled giant sculptures made from stacked stones. Anuksuk means to act as a human being. This means that the stones act just like humans would, if the stone statues were real humans. So these stone people communicated with the Inuit peoples on hunting routes. They were useful stones, helping the Inuit find their way. Sometimes they mark where food is hidden. They can also be a warning to change direction. Stones can also act like arrows. For example, if a hunter lost a seal that he had killed in shallow water, he could point two stones in the direction of the lost seal for his hunting partner to collect later. They are also spiritual guides and reflect that Inuit ancestors and other living Inuit always cared for each other and knew how to survive on their lands. Nuksuk is usually two stones stacked on top of each other. They are often confused with stone statues called Inunguak, which means human-like. These stone statues have stone hands, feet, and heads. These numbers are more symbolic than real. They were traditionally built by Inuit, but you can also see them across Canada, where many people have recreated them. Regarding diplomacy, relations during meetings between Vikings and Inuit people in North America were also not very good. In addition to the story mentioned above, later there were more Vikings who came to visit the Inuit people. Another Norseman named Thorfinn Karlsefni made a journey to the New World. Unlike his predecessors, Thorfinn was a wealthy merchant of famous lineage and organized a much larger expedition, with three ships and between 160 and 250 men and women, along with livestock. Thorfinn ventured farther south than either Leif or Thorvald. They eventually settled in a place called Stormfield, where they met a group of Native Americans they called the Skraling, the Inuit people of Canada. At first, everything was peaceful as the two groups exchanged goods with each other. Native Americans traded furs for red cloth and a magical liquid called milk obtained from Viking cattle. But tension soon arose and there were instances of hostility and confrontation. The climax comes when a bull from a Viking camp runs out of its enclosure, scaring a group of Native Americans leading to an all-out catapult attack and a legendary battle. It was a warning to Thorfinn and his men causing them to leave the place and return to Greenland. The Inuit were a nomadic tribe and archaeologists discovered they moved and settled in many different areas. By 1100 CE, Inuit migrants had reached western Greenland where they settled. During the 12th century, they also settled in East Greenland. Researchers believe Inuit society had an advantage by adapting to using dogs as transport animals and developing large weapons. In Canada and Greenland, Inuit circulate almost exclusively north of the Arctic tree line, the de facto southern border of Inuit society. The largest Inuit community in the world's southernmost formation is Rigolet in Nunatsiavut. After about 1350, the climate became colder during a period known as the Little Ice Age. During this period, Russian and Alaskan natives may have continued whaling activities. However, in the high Arctic, Inuit were forced to abandon hunting and whaling sites when bowhead whales disappeared from Canada and Greenland. These Inuit had to survive on a much poorer diet and lost access to essential raw materials for tools and architecture that they had previously obtained from whaling. The changing climate forced the Inuit to move south, pushing them into marginal niches along the edges of the tree line. These are areas that First Nations have not yet occupied, or where they are weak enough that Inuit can live near them. Researchers have difficulty determining when the Inuit stopped this territorial expansion. There is evidence that the Inuit are still moving into new territory in the south. The Inuit's essential utensils relied almost exclusively on animal skins, driftwood and bones, although some tools were also made from worked stone, especially easily worked soapstone. Walrus ivory is a particularly necessary material used to make knives. Art plays an important role in Inuit society and continues to do so today. Small sculptures of animals and human figures, often depicting everyday activities such as hunting and whaling, were carved from ivory and bone. In modern times, prints and figurative works carved in relatively soft stone, such as soapstone, serpentinite or argillite have also become popular. Thank you for listening. How do you feel about the wars between the Inuit and Vikings?
Please leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to support us.